Hi everyone. Well, this is a voiceover, but not quite as you know it. Not quite as I've done before. Not for a long time, anyway. I'm just going to talk a little bit as I re-watch this video that I made of a diorama that I put together over the last month or so. It's only a very small piece, this. It's like um, some of my Patreon pieces. In fact, it was originally going to be a piece for a written tutorial, which I feature on my Patreon page. Head over there now, you can get dozens, I can't remember how many I've done, but it's loads, um, and all for one small price. Uh, so this started off as a just a little wooden pen pot really which I picked up from Hobbycraft here in the UK and I decided to cut it out, uh, cut out a kind of shape of the land using in the end uh, a hobby saw rather than that kind of Japanese saw because I could get into all the angles and I just smoothed it off and then I started filling it out with uh, bits of extruded polystyrene. Now I wanted to make a really nice forest base for this Jamie Lannister maimed captive figure from Simon, uh, cool mini or not I believe that stands for. I'm not a gamer um, but I really do enjoy painting miniatures and I also really enjoy making bases for them. I've kind of moved away from larger pieces partly because I don't want to use so many products and that's not a cost thing it's just I feel a bit wasteful sometimes because often I just I, I can't bear to part with them and then they start cluttering up my place and then I take them all apart and use bits for other dioramas uh, trees etc uh, so I've taken to making small pieces because I like little display pieces I've, I've made several of these kind of things recently now um, I'm not going to show you how I painted Jamie himself. Uh, there's loads of tutorials online for how to paint these sorts of things and they're much better at it than I am. At least they're better tutorial painting tutorial makers. I'm, I'm not bad at painting but uh, it takes me much, much longer and I don't have a, a set kind of technique. So after I'd finished putting the basic land shape together then I used green stuff. Um, which is an epoxy putty. If you're worried about epoxy, you definitely should wear gloves. Uh, I'm not here because I'm not allergic to it, although I don't handle it very much either. Uh, this is just basic stuff that you can pick up from most hobby stores. And I created some ribs for this tree. Now this tree was designed to kind of disappear off the edge of the diorama it's a trick I often use so it's like a big tree and it's a section of that big tree as it leans away and because it's so large I wanted to make some large kind of buttresses um, so I use rolls of the green stuff and I'm also sculpting in there some um, boulders and stones uh, and there you can see I'm lifting up a root there to stick a, a boulder of green stuff underneath it. Um, I often use milliput as well. When I use milliput I always do wear gloves because it's very messy um, and the green stuff isn't so messy uh, but it's also a lot harder to manipulate uh, on a, a diorama setting uh, as opposed to miniatures. A lot of miniatures uh, are, are sculpted using green stuff because of its elastic qualities uh, whereas milliput isn't really it doesn't have that that kind of stretch it does stretch to a point but then it kind of breaks apart you know whereas this has an elastic quality to it and here after applying some stones around the setting I'm just uh, tidying up the edges flattening them off a little bit um, I've got some stones that kind of poke out from the side of the diorama so when the green stuff dried I actually sanded it flush with the edge of the diorama so it looks like some of the stones are disappearing off the edge and then I used some filler this is or spackle as people in America call it and this is a very cheap variety I think this cost me about a, a pound um, and this just neatens up the edges and uh, I'm sanding it once it's dried uh, so this creates a nice flush edge because I also had some little splits in the wood and then I painted the whole thing with 
black gesso, which has got a lovely uh, matte finish. It goes on thickly, um, so you have to be careful not to destroy any detail if you've got fine detail, which I didn't at this point. Um, it looks gloss here because it's wet, but it goes very matte and it's got a kind of a, a, a keyed texture to it as well. Um, and after that had been applied, I used some um, summer earth or summer ground from Soil Works, which is a very, it's kind of a robust acrylic uh, with a, a very fine textured surface to it as well. And I went over everything bar the big stones. For that and then for the tree texture for the bark I decided to well I to say I decided this is a technique I've established over a little while and as you, if you want a closer look at it go over to my patreon page where I've got several projects that use this I use some crackle paint um, in this case it's dry earth or dry ground from soil works which is um, the best one I've used actually it's very thick it, you see when it came out of the pot it's almost like PVA and you paint it over fairly thickly over your whole tree and then you draw the texture, just vertical lines, into the tree uh, once it's still wet, so the paint is still wet, when it's still wet rather. Uh, and then as the paint dries and cracks, it cracks across uh, in the kind of the bits between those ribs, uh, those grooves rather, so it cracks across the rib. So it has that kind of, you know, when you look at a tree, it has those vertical uh, troughs, or vertical grooves in it. I, I don't know what to call them. Vertical grooves in it, and then they are cracked across that, and it creates that crisscross uh, criss look. But actually, the, the, the main cracks are going very down vertically, uh, vertically, and they're down the length, virtually down the whole length of the bark. So there you could see how it looked after it had dried um, and now I start mixing up an earthy mix of paint um, uh, I use Vallejo colors and again I went over the entire thing because the soil works was just to provide a bit of an extra texture um, I'm talking about the the undercoat um, of the uh, summer ground um, and I went over the textured paint I thinned down the the earthy colour as well so that it didn't obscure all the detail in the in the bark and I went over the tree to provide a base coat for that now I painted the stones with stone grey from Vallejo and now I'm using some slimy grime from uh, Vallejo again now these they come in light and dark varieties and you can use either really um, and it's just if you spot it over it's something like almost like leopard spotting over the stones you create a really nice natural mossy look without it being too mossy I mean this is all going to get covered in moss anyway so it's all a bit kind of redundant but who who cares I, <laughs> I enjoy the process uh, and now some European thick mud for the banks very lightly uh, applied very lightly because this looks quite wet and thick um, so I just kind of almost dry brush this on and stipple it and then I used some streaking grime which I think is designed for more artificial surfaces so, you know, doors and walls and vehicles probably but I find it works really really nicely in natural settings as well because it's got a it's like the slimy grime um, but it's very it, it's got it's kind of like a different tone it's a slightly browner tone and now I used it to shade the tree and you can see it started to create a grey greeny browny look for the tree uh, and then I highlighted the stones with a bit more stone grey on the top and it's really starting to come together now I really um, enjoy using these uh, these brushes from I think these are Citadel brushes um, the dry brush with a bit of stone grey on it to pick out the details on the bark and I was, yeah this is really happy I was really happy with that soil works uh, dry ground and now for the shading I mix some Agrax earth shade and some Athonian camel camel <laughs> camo shade um, about equal mix um, and I didn't apply any thinner to it um, and I, I went sparingly with it though, I just painted underneath the stones and around um, where you would get shadows 
I'm just looking all the time to create depth uh, with this a depth of texture, depth of color. And there you can see I'm shading in the, the deeper recesses of the tree. Um, as I said, a lot of this would be covered over later with moss, but you don't know what bits yet. So here's the first bit of moss. It's a Woodland Scenics blended turf green blend. Uh, it's a packet I've had for <laughs> about a dozen years. Um, and now I start, I, I paint over a little bit of glue over the stones that I want to cover in moss as well. This is scenic glue, so it's like a watered down PVA with a, a little bit of um, matte medium in it. And um, you could, could use, actually, I, I tend to use matte medium and uh, water uh, rather than just the PVA. Um, and I put a little drop of dish soap in there, tiny drop. And then some isopropanol. Uh, or otherwise known as isopropyl alcohol, which breaks the surface tension of the flock or the the moss, if you like, and then I that allows the glue to soak through. So here I'm applying it through a bottle. And if you're wondering why I've got long nails on one hand, by the way, it's because I play the guitar. So now the two kind of this is my go-to moss uh, in formula, my method. Uh, my recipe I use some one millimeter dead grass uh, this is WWS uh, product uh, War World Scenics and this creates a really nice uh, soft moss appearance you know how moss slightly yellows as it gets older as it grows out well this creates that and initially I press some into it and then I just go over some with my uh, just just sprinkle it on there it, it can irritate your fingers so again wear some gloves if you're worried about that um, uh, and then a bit more glue um, over all of that and now it was time to stick Jamie down so I used some super glue very carefully so I didn't stick my fingers to him or to it there was a little gap underneath so I stuck some uh, little clumps of the one millimeter grass underneath like a little hummock uh, and include them in place with the scenic glue as well and so now to highlight the tops of the moss I'm using two versions of yellow um, one from Citadel one from Vallejo one slightly golden and one's quite bright and I mix them both together and then just very lightly highlighted the tops of uh, the rocks to create a dappled effect and also you'll notice I applied some uh, moss over the uh, some of the the roots of the tree which also have texture on them underneath by the way um, and once that's done I, I, I go in with the Athenian camera shade again to add a little bit more depth or to redefine the, the shadows because obviously most of them have been lost uh, because all that work I did before has kind of been obliterated by this moss now these are birch seeds, uh, lots of places sell them as uh, scenic leaves or as hobby leaves, diorama leaves. They've looked like very small maple leaves. Uh, I crush them up because they're very big, otherwise I crush them up and then I tip them over the, the places where I want them. They gather in all the little nooks and crannies. I'm pointing at the screen here, you can't can't see that. <laughs> and, uh, and now I'm using some moss texture from AK Interactive. You could use... Um, it's basically it's it's ground up foam. It, you could use Woodland Scenics coarse turf, uh, their kind of mid green blend. Um, when I bought this, I thought it was going to be something else. I thought it was going to be like a, I don't know what I thought it was going to be, but it ended up being coarse foam. <laughs> so anyway, I use it because I think, well, I'm not spending that money and not using it, but I use it sparingly and I brush it into the little gaps. I don't create clumps with it. I create a shade with it it looks very bright right now but when you've applied the glue it goes much darker um, before all this glue application by the way I, I apply isopropanol through a dropper bottle but for some reason I haven't filmed that and now I'm applying a little bit more of the uh, the, the, the moss the dead grass to just soften that um, AK moss texture and then a bit more Ethonian camera shade underneath Jamie to shadow him and keep going until you basically until you're happy with what you've what you've created the, the kind of textures the, um, the shadows the depth of color 
know when to stop though because you can apply so much that you just lose all definition uh, it's one of my big things I, I hardly ever know when to stop but I did with this one I think now I'm using some two millimeter tufts I actually made these tufts myself um, if you look right down in the right hand corner there's a template there um, and I use a static grass applicator and I use some two millimeter grass now these are a game changer um, gamers grass laser cut plants these are fern leaves or bracken rather and uh, they're quite big but they're very easy to press out and to create beautiful beautiful ferns with they're absolutely exquisite detail I put one and you just glue them down with super glue but um, and then I, I, I put some leaves over the top of them to, to to make them a little bit more realistic a little less shiny a little bit more realistic glued those on moved them around with the toothpick there I actually put some bracken leaves where I didn't want them so I had to carefully pick them out again and then re-glue them elsewhere I just felt that it was too busy in that corner so I uh, and, and I didn't want to create another massive bush so I just have uh, three leaves there and now some red aloe and some dumb cane which oh, I don't know if these would be in this forest but they look nice um, and they're, they're the right color palette and I wanted some variation in the leaves so I used these uh, nice red ones and then some little round green ones and again these are stuck down with super glue you can put any number of leaves together um, these uh, ones you kind of supposed to layer them I don't suppose you'd have to really uh, but I did I, I put down one and then here you can see me dipping it in the super glue a little just a little um, florette of them I don't know if that's the right word a little wheel of them and uh, I put that uh, over the top of the other one uh, and then uh, a piece of twig to act as a fallen branch. Now some Vallejo moss and lichen. This is a very nice uh, textured yellow acrylic, uh, which is a perfect match uh, for natural lichen. And I just very carefully kind of drew little dots and circles of this uh, over the tree, just to, as a final detail, really. And also over the fallen limbs there and over some of the roots uh, just being very careful with it because it's such a thick product and all that was left after that was to paint the edges with black gesso because that's very matte as I said it has a wonderful coverage as well just being very careful and you can see there that the uh, the stones on the edge of the diorama so I was very happy with this piece I really turned out exactly like I'd hoped um, I love those gamers grass products um, I really hope you enjoyed watching along with me these models are from a uh, song of ice and fire uh, miniature game by Simon are, are absolutely beautifully detailed and a joy to paint really good fun so thank you ever so much for joining me check out my patreon and I'll see you next time